hello everybody. You probably don't realize it, but I've just returned from the United, where I've been making an intensive study of, of their economical and and, 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 and and I feel that it's a great privilege to stand once again on, on English and then beat about the, the bush until I eventually arrive at a foregone de Lucan which can do no more and no less than prove to you as British objects subject but that there comes a, a, a tide in, in the affairs of Papa which taken by the bull by the doings should eventually overthrow the house of and, and thereby proving to the people that every dog has his and every housemaid has at least two afternoons a week to sort of get behind herself and then find out where she because I feel that every one of you has something in you and of course if you haven't it, it's most you know because I feel that in every one of you that there is a stagnant something which is dormant and and that's that's why I, I want you to be guided by me and then try and then get something out of your wife life especially especially at a time like the present, when everybody is, is going around hay nonning and then hot chawing and walking up to everybody else and saying, can you take it? Just like that, and, and, and not even waiting for an answer. I don't know, I, I always say, do unto others and then vice versa, and never, never take no from a dancer. For, because during a conversation I had with our Prime Minister, Mr. Stanley Mac Ramsbottom. I mean, he did, told me very aptly that prosperity, after all, is, is just around the thing. But I don't know, it's, it's a long lane that has no dental and a necessity. Necessity, after all, is the mother of, of intuition, which sort of comes to every father at least once in a, night, a, a life and, and sort of proves to him that every dark cloud has a silver gold standard and I don't know it's, it's better to have lived and, and lost than never to have paid income tax and, 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 an opportunity gentlemen knocks at your door once in a nightgown <laughs> but I, I want you I want you to grasp opportunity with your one for free because I feel that with depression on its way to some less fortunate that now now is the time for, for the rank and, and file to, to fight, tooth and, and nail, and nail and, and tooth and, and stand up. Put your backs to, to the, your shoulder to, to thread near to Westminster and take one foot out of the grave and, and put it on, on the bottom of the page and then turn over a new leaf. I'm terribly glad you, you turned over a, a new leaf, I mean, because as I look into your simple faces, I, I feel simply and I hope you will understand why I feel simply when I tell you that I've just driven my mother-in-law over the hill to the poorhouse, as if it wasn't difficult enough without putting a hill in, and actually, we were awfully sorry to see the old girl go. You know, she, she'd worked very hard to put her children in, in college, and, and they, in turn, worked doubly to, to put her in, in the institute, and I can see her now, sitting at the head of the stable, uh, table, eating like a horse. Not, not, of course, that I'm saying anything against the horse. Very, very noble animal, the horse. You, you get milk from, from horses. They're, they're terribly indirectly, of course. I mean, the horse draws the cart that carries the milk that comes from the cow that Jack uh, uh, tries. But apart from that, the, the, the government are trying to get these horses off the streets while other people are allowed to, to go around un 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 left entirely to, to there. I mean, I put it to you. Is it the horse's fault that it becomes congested? I need mean, even the best brought-up animal when left standing for any considerable is liable because to me it's the buses that, that uh, caused the, the because all my people were accomplished to horse were absolutely at home in the saddle. I, I remember my maternal grandmother at 70, they tell me, had a seat that was the envy of the county. My grandfather had a very fine seat too, but... He gave it up one day to an old lady in an under, and he's never been the same man. So sort of give and take, you know. Very fine, every other inch a gentleman, and he was a very, very lovable character. Very much like me in many respects. He never, never worked. 
Jacques, he was the idol of his family. He'd been idle and awful, and then he used to say half-jokingly that he earned his money by the sweat of his brow. Of a brow. Yes, yes, it, it all comes back to me now. Charming little cottage it was. Fifty-two rooms with congealed plumbing. Very attached to the old place. We'd been attached to so many, and outside the house there were fountains playing. Five of them, all accomplished musicians, and then so was my Aunt Melba. They tell me she was a raving lunatic, a, a beauty who had been the toast of Vienna, but when she got back, she was a little crummy, you know, and it was very shortly after her return that she met Alfred and then took him for better or worse. <laughs> worse. I don't know, I always thought she took him for an awful, you know. However, it wasn't long before she was back in, in the bosom of the family. And, of course, in those days, as you know, bosoms were bosoms, and vast herds of these creatures used to range the western plains of the United in indignity, and yes, yes, I've traveled quite expensive, extensive, and as I always say, travel broadens the, the, the mind, and I don't know, it's, it's remarks like that that renew your, your faith in, and so, having made myself quite clear, I should like to thank you from, from the bottom of my heart and from Mr. Stanley Mac Ram's bottom also. Mm -hmm. 